Hello, glider pilots, and welcome back to the Soaring Society Boulder Ground School. Uh, we're going to talk about boxing wake on this episode, on this ground school episode. Um, and boxing the wake, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what it is and what it isn't. Uh, first of all, boxing the wake is not boxing like this. It's boxing like this and going around uh, the outside of the wake that's caused by the tow plane. Uh, it should not be a scary thing to do, although if you haven't seen it before and you're sitting in the front seat of the glider trying to fly it, uh, it might be a little unnerving. And so this ground school is intended to let you see it uh, with a, uh, in the comfort of your uh, home watching uh, YouTube. and. Uh, to get an idea so when you get to the field it'll go a little better. Uh, recently we had a new member join and as part of what we do with every new member uh, is we have to check them out in uh, the club gliders. Uh, so this member is a, a CFI and wanted to get a back a rear seat check out along with her check out for the for the ASK21. So I sat in the front seat uh, like ballast and uh, just went along for the ride but decided to record it uh, and show it later. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to see that that uh, boxing the weight uh, and and then stop it and comment and so that hopefully you'll get a better idea of uh, of what it's like. Uh, first of all, boxing the wake. This little cartoon here shows what it's like to go around and so what we're doing is we're going around the, the wake uh, it's going to look a little different in actuality but uh, this gives you something of an idea uh, the wake uh, it feels like it's just coming from the propeller like there's just one wake but it's probably uh, from the from the wind tip vortices of the tow plane um, there's some controversy of where it comes from. It really doesn't matter where it comes from. It's there. It's always there. So when you uh, go down through the wake, you feel the wake. So uh, moving along here. Sorry about that. So, at any rate, um, we are going to box the wake. We were doing this flight uh, to uh, for a checkout for club ships. And uh, so one of the things I did was I had uh, Jenna uh, box the wake. And so we'll talk about it here as we go along. Here we are in normal tow position. And normal tow position means directly behind the tow plane just a little bit below it, uh, what I call the happy spot, meaning uh, if you were to take your hands off the control, it would tend to just go back to this place. It's, it's a stable position. So the first thing we're going to do is go down through the wake. The, we get, as we get down a little ways, okay, there's the bump. That, that's the wake that we felt. And when we go down through the wake, we don't want to rush it, but we don't want to linger in the wake. Uh, probably the best way to talk about it is to go through it with authority. That is, you push forward, you go right down through it. Now, when you get just below the wake, you stop. So here we're still getting bounced around a little bit. And there it stopped. So now, uh, we're going to go to the outside, uh, off to the left, and you can see the turn here has already started, and there's a little bit of bank in. So the tow plane is always trying to pull us, pull us back to center. So you have to put in some control pressure to the left to get it, and you can see here some bank. We get out to the side, and she holds it right here. So one potato, just the one second hold. Now we're coming up the left side, 
and careful not to overshoot. It's really easy to overshoot. So when you get right there, see how she pushed the nose down just as we got to that spot. Now, there's some talk about how do you know how far outside you should be? Well, the answer is it's a sight picture. And, you know, I've heard uh, ideas about, well, how the tail, tail of the tow plane should look relative to the wheels and all that. I'll tell you the truth, I can't, I can't really follow it. I can't remember all that stuff. But uh, right there is the visual picture I would like to see. Uh, you notice the, the line is, uh, you know, kind of normal. To, it's just a hair bow to it. Um, and things are, are just fine. We're out to the side. We're not really tugging on the tow plane. So we're going out far enough that the tow plane doesn't get tugged. Now to come back across the top, um, all we have to do is release control pressure. And you'll see Jenna release the control pressure here in a moment. There, see that? And so now with no control pressure, we're drifting across. But as we start drifting across, we've got to put some control pressure in there. See how we're uh, he's putting in a right bank and how there's more of it and it has to be held. So we come out here, one 1,000, and just kind of hold it for a second. Now it's still come down the right side, but still having to hold the control pressure. See how we're... Tilt it over a little bit, lean it over a little bit into the, to hold it there. Now, see that? We're getting some slack line. And the reason is she started going a little bit too fast, not too bad, but a little bit too fast, and that created some slack line. Let's see what happens next. Okay, more slack. Ah, oh, she slowed down to this rate of descent, and that little bit of slack line, it wasn't critical or anything, pretty common. Uh, she controlled it and it came right back out. So now we get down to the lower right corner. So how far is the lower right corner? Well, here again, you know, you can get into these ideas about how things should line up with a tow plane, but I would just say you feel it and you're as far out to the bottom corner as you can be without tugging the tow plane, giving the tow plane a hard tug. Tow plane is still going to feel us doing this but they're not going to be tugged to the point where they can't keep control of the tow plane. All right, now to come back to below the, come back to center and below the, the weight, all we really have to do is release the control pressure. And you'll see, okay, see that the control pressure gets released and now we start drifting back to center. We get back to center, but not quite, oh, notice we're not quite to center here. And we're already starting to move back up. So here we are, we're moving back up through the wake. Careful not to, there's the wake. There's the bumpiness of the wake. Careful not to overshoot, which she doesn't overshoot. And now she realizes she's a little bit off center. So she starts to drift back to center to correct it. So, um, what do you think about that box in the wake? Now, uh, as a uh, instructor for the club, I have to decide whether uh, that box in the wake is uh, at standard or not, and should she be endorsed uh, with the club uh, for Aerotel. Uh, so, if it were a if let's say it was a check ride with a with a designated pilot examiner, should the DPE would the DPE passer or flunker uh, for being off a little bit uh, on the way up? Well, certainly that's that meets private pilot standards. That's no problem. Uh, as for commercial private pilot, yeah, that that's that's all right. I mean, it was still a pretty good job of boxing the wake, other than that little foie paw. Uh, at the end. Uh, but uh, at any rate, uh, I, I think she passed commercial as well. Uh, on CFI, would the, what would the DPE do? What would a DPE do? What would I do if I were DPE? Well, I would probably say, hmm, you know, were you off a little? And she, and she said, yeah, I didn't center. And I'd say, well, go ahead and try it again. Just start at the top and just do half the box in the way. 
<laughs> uh, so at any rate, uh, if you think uh, Janice should have been endorsed for Aerotel, uh, please give this video a, a thumbs up, uh, and we'll uh, we'll see you uh, another time uh, for uh, another ground school. Thanks for watching.